Hey there, this is Steve at web to ink and in this short tutorial I'm going to show you how to create and manage uh, online stores. This is kind of going to be a two-part tutorial. I'm going to show you how to create and manage the stores if you're an admin. Then I'm going to show you how to create and manage stores if you're a customer. Um, so it's it's two different processes. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is a demo website, uh, Big Printin'. I actually designed this entire site in another demo video, so you might want to check that out. Um, but right now I'm not logged in. I'm just looking at this site the same exact way that a customer would. So let's go ahead and log in and I'll create a store as an admin uh, and then we'll log out and I'll create a store as a customer. Uh, so if you're on your website and you want to log into the admin you can just click on my account and type in your username and password and as an admin, it will recognize when you log in and it will give you this blue admin bar at the top. This does not appear when your customers log in. This is just for the website admin. Uh, so I'm going to go over here to where it says Big Printin. I'm going to click on the dashboard. All right, so now we're logged into the back end admin dashboard. And when you want to create a store or manage a store, you're going to go to this section uh, in your menu. It says Manage Stores. So I'm going to click on that. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is the store settings. So this is going to determine um, whether or not the stores are disabled or enabled. Obviously, we want them enabled for this demo. Then who can open a store? You can have any user. You can also have any user, but the admin has to approve it. Or you can set it up to where only the admins can open stores on behalf of the users. So for this demo, we'll leave it at any user without admin approval required. Um, this is how the profits are handled. This is the store item pricing. Um, we have a much longer tutorial on how to set all this up and exactly what everything does but this is basically the page where you're going to set your store permissions uh, so let's go back to that same menu uh, manage stores I'm just going to click on manage stores um, so right now there's one test store in there we're just going to disregard that and this is how you're going to set up a store as an admin so all you're going to do is simply enter the name of your store. So we'll call this Scouts Store. Click Submit. Okay, so this is now the admin section for Scouts Store. Uh, this right here is the URL. Uh, I'm going to right click and open that in a separate tab right now there's nothing on there so there's not really anything to look at uh, when store orders come in uh, you can click right here to see the store orders that will show you only the orders from this particular store uh, this is the user uh, this doesn't really apply when an admin is creating a store um, but if you have a client who creates a store this will be a link to their uh, user account information uh, right here this is if you want the store to be password protected you could put in a password here uh, right here these are the permissions by default they're all checked because we set up the store to be um, where anybody can open a store without admin approval uh, right here is the profit for the store. Right now we have it set as a general upcharge, and that means all the stores get 20% of the uh, profit. Or they get, there's a 20% markup on your cost, which goes to the customers. Uh, this right here, you can just kind of fine-tune the markup. Uh, and then these are 
the templates for the store pages. So you're able to create your own store page templates and we also sell them as like packs where you can get like three or four uh, store page templates so that you have a little bit of variety. Uh, if it's a fundraiser or a campaign style store this would be your close date. Uh, and then order tags. This is kind of a unique way to track and sort your orders within a store. So if you have a store, say for a Pee Wee uh, football league, there might be 20 teams in that league and 40 different coaches. If you're delivering garments to the coaches to distribute to the students, uh, you can create an order tag with the coaches' names so that when you're processing these orders internally, you'll know which orders to put with which orders. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the store. I'm going to click on Login as Store Owner. All of the store building is done on the front side of the website. So we're in the front end now. When you're ready to go back to the admin, you can just click this red button here. So I can see we've got our store here. It's called Scout Store. Uh, we've got the URL. If we want, we can put a password in here. Uh, this is some welcome text. So if I were just to type in welcome to my store. Right here we're going to upload a store logo. So let's go ahead and I'll just grab this logo. And right here you can upload a store uh, banner. So let's go ahead and grab a banner. And then right here again is where you can put in some order tags. Um, if your users are creating their own store, they're not going to have access to the page I previously showed you. So this is where they would set up the order tags. We're going to skip over that for now. I'm just going to click on update. Okay, so now we've kind of just laid the foundation for the store. We've put in our logo, we've put in a banner, we've given it a name. If we wanted a password, we could have put one in. So now we're going to go to the next tab and just create some categories. We'll say t-shirts. I don't think there's any bags on this website. And then we'll say hats. And we'll say youth. How about youth shirts? And we'll click create. So now we've created this category tree. Right down here you can drag and drop them and sort the order. Or if you wanted to make one of the categories a subcategory, you could just pull it back and drop it. And then that will make it a subcategory of the category above it. So I'm just going to put all these back in order. So once we have our categories made, it's time to create some products. So I'm just going to click on this next tab, which is products. I'm going to click add new product. And this is going to launch our design tool, but this is kind of a, this is a different version of the design tool for us just to create store products. So let's go ahead and uh, make a hat right quick. Looks like a nice hat. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. That looks nice. Let me upload my logo for it. Select my colors. Perfect. It popped up just about the way I want it, maybe a little bit smaller. Okay, so now we've got a product created. We're just going to click on Save Design. Right here, we're going to name it. Let's uh, call it uh, Logo Trucker Hat. Right here, you can put in a description. Uh, this is optional. 
Uh, I'm just going to leave that blank for now and then I'm going to select my category which is going to be hats. Then I'll click on add to my store. So now that we've added that product to our store we've got two options here. We can go back to our store building uh, page or we can design more items. If you have a lot of items with the same design uh, then clicking design more items is great because you can just leave the design there and you can just swap out uh, the products. So let's say we want to do a kids uh, softball type shirt. Swap it out and put that where we want it. Save it. Say youth raglan T. And we will drop this in the youth shirts and not in the hats. Go ahead and click add. And let me design one more item. So I'm just going to go in here. Let's do a men's shirt. Let's choose the... We'll do this v-neck. Why not? Okay, let's choose a different shirt color, maybe some sort of a light blue. There we go, that looks cool. I'm going to save this design and we'll just call it V-neck T. And we'll drop this one in T-shirts and remove it from Youth Shirts. I'll click Add to my store. Now that that's done, I've just quickly added three products to my store. I'm going to click on my account. And it's going to take me right back to the products page. If I click on products, it's going to show me all the products that I just added. Uh, this next tab is for profits. So once you start to accumulate orders for your store, uh, your customers will be able to see the profits listed from their store orders here. And if you want to pay your customers in an automated fashion, uh, they can enter their PayPal email address here. And then in the back end of the admin, you can download a uh, CSV or a TXT file to upload to PayPal and automatically pay everybody their profits. So if you have a lot of stores going and maybe they're on-demand stores and you're paying profit, uh, profits on a weekly or monthly basis, this will save you a ton of time. Uh, store orders is just going to list all of their store orders. Uh, so they'll know who's ordered from their store and what they've ordered. Uh, and this page also includes their profits. Uh, so they can see their profits in uh, two places actually. So let's go back to the uh, first tab and let's go ahead and take a look at this store page. All right, so here is the store that we just designed. Uh, you can see here's the logo we uploaded. Here's the welcome text that we had added. Uh, here's the banner that we uploaded. Uh, and it also has a little fly out shopping cart up at the top. Uh, so if you scroll down here, you're going to see you've got a section that lists your categories and then your products are going to be displayed here and you can sort them with some standard um, sorting tools right there. Uh, so let's take a look at one of the category pages. Category pages are a little bit more basic so uh, you've got some breadcrumb uh, navigation right here and then you're going to have your categories again right there. So let's take a look now at the product page. So this is a individual product page. Uh, you got the same uh, navigation and categories here with a nice big picture of the product. Um, then right over here is where your your where users and shoppers can put in their quantities and see prices and add to cart. Uh, it's also got a description here. Um, all of this is customizable, so if you wanted this description to be located somewhere else, uh, you could definitely do that. Um, in fact, you have the ability to create your own store page templates. 
so say for example if you didn't want this to be full width and you wanted a more traditional box type layout uh, you could create a custom uh, store template for your own stores or if you have a scenario where a customer wants their store template to uh, look like their actual website uh, you could build a store template uh, to do that uh, so this is just another product page uh, your customers they can come in here put in their sizes and quantities add them to the shopping cart uh, right here this will take you back to the store for more shopping uh, this will take you to the checkout as will this proceed to checkout button uh, right here's a section for a coupon code and then of course you've got your thumbnail of the image uh, link back to the product and you can adjust your quantities here so if we go ahead and proceed to checkout uh, you can you know your customer can enter in all their all of their information um, this store since it's a demo store is not set up to take uh, credit cards um, so yeah your customer would come in here put in all their details uh, if they wanted it blind shipped they could do that as well they can put in some notes about their order uh, and then this will go over exactly what they ordered and they can also choose a standard or rush production um, but this is going to apply uh, it's going to depend on what type of store you have if you have a on-demand store where you just constantly produce and ship and the store stays open all the time uh, you might want to offer this as an option if it's a fundraising or a campaign style store where it runs for say a month and then you gang up all the orders together uh, you might not want to have different production options. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back to the admin right quick. And I'll just review right quick right here. If you're, if you're an admin of the website, like you work at the print shop, uh, then you can easily add stores through this manage stores uh, section. Um, now let's go ahead and take a look at how a customer would create and manage their own store. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the website and go to the home page and log out. and we'll go back to the home page and kind of run through this whole process okay so a customer lands on your website and they're wanting to make a store um, obviously you want nice clear navigation so they know where to go in the case of this sample store we have an open a store link uh, so a customer can come come here and just register a new account it right there put in a password and I'll go ahead and click register this particular website is configured so that when people sign up they're automatically logged into their account you can also set it up so that they're not automatically logged in and they receive an email uh, to log in you can even set it up where all they do is put in their email and then it will send them an email with their username and a password that the system will generate for them. I like doing it like this because I think it's easier for the users to remember their username and password if they create them if they create it themselves instead of having some crazy string of random lowercase and uppercase letters and special characters and numbers. So I'll go ahead and click uh, register. No, oh, I already have an account with that name. Let's just add another 98. I'll click register. Okay, so now I'm logged into my account the exact same way that a user would be logged in. Um, so 
quick overview of this. This is the dashboard. Uh, when they want to create an account or when they want to create a store, they're going to click on My Store. If they've designed items and placed orders before, they'll be able to look at all their orders and all of their designs, even if they did not order them. Uh, downloads, this isn't used very often by print shops, but if you want to sell like digital art files or uh, stuff like that, you can certainly do that. Uh, and then address account details are pretty common and log out will just uh, log you out. So let's go ahead and click on my store. And this one I'm going to call Steve's Shop. We'll click Submit. My store has been created. I'm not going to put any uh, welcome text here, but let's go ahead and grab a logo. We'll use this fake logo. Let's go ahead and grab a banner. And let's go ahead and check out how the order tags will work. So uh, let's just say this is a corporate store uh, and this corporation has different departments. They have sales, HR, service, um, you know, just different departments within a bigger company. So we'll say choose your department. We'll add the order tag and then we'll just put in some options. Let's say HR, sales, service. That should work. I'll click on update. Okay, so we've got all of that initial setup done. Uh, we've got our order tags, we've got our banner, and we've got our logo. So let's go ahead and create some categories. We'll call this one Tease. And then we'll make another category for Hats. And then let's just do a subcategory for one of the departments. We'll say uh, Sales. And that will be a subcategory of Tees. We'll click Create there. So now you can see our category tree is here. We've got two top level categories, T-shirts and hats. One subcategory, which is Sales. Uh, that's a subcategory of the Tees category. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some products. Okay, we'll start with a hat. Who wants to wear a plain white hat? That'll be filthy in no time. Okay, so let's go ahead and upload uh, some files for this. We'll just use that same uh, fake logo file. Okay, so that's obviously going to look pretty terrible on a blue hat. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, cool. So we've got this first product made. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'll just say logo hat. I won't put any description in there just to keep things moving. I'll add that to the store. Let's design a couple more items. Uh, let's do men's tea. We'll just go with the unisex tri blend. And we'll just make this kind of a basic full front t shirt. I'll kind of stick with that gray theme. There we go, that looks good. Let's save this. Logo T. We'll put that in t-shirts. Okay, and let's design one more item for um, 
for that subcategory that we had, which I think was the sales. So let's go ahead and keep this same t-shirt. But let's make it a left chest and a full back type of configuration. Uh, I'll choose these same three colors. And then let's just say that there's going to be a phone number on the back too. And we'll make it the darker of the blues. There we go. Looking pretty good. That blue might be a little dark. That blue might be a little light. And we'll keep it with the darker blue. Okay, there we go. Uh, let me save this. And we'll call this the sales T. And we'll drop this in the sales subcategory and click add to my store. I'm going to design one more item right quick because I want to show you guys um, how the customization works within the stores. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's just change the color of this so we're not you know, try to keep it a little bit different. Okay, there we go. So we'll leave that left chest where it is. Uh, let's get rid of that and let's get rid of this. And now I'm going to show you how to add some personalization here. Okay, so we've got the front of this shirt designed, uh, but on the back, I want to go ahead and add some personalization like, um, like player names and numbers. So I'm going to come over here and go to Team Order. I'm going to hit Add Name Style. That's going to bring up the word example. I'm going to position it and get it the size I want. Let's go ahead and make it the darker, that darker blue color. And we'll go back and add, hit team order again. And we'll add these numbers. Let's make it same color. So this is going to stay double zero and this will stay example. Um, and what's going to happen when your clients order, uh, they're going to be able to put in the variable data. So let me go ahead and save this and I'll show you. So we'll say logo T with name on back. This will be in the t-shirts category and I'll save it. All right, now let's go back to my account which is just going to take you back to your store pages. Uh, click on products, check out all the stuff I just made. Okay, great, looks good. We'll go back to create store. I'm going to right click on this and open it in a new tab so we can take a look at the store we just made. All right, so here's the store that we just made. Uh, we got the logo that we uploaded. We got our banner. Uh, we got our little fly out uh, shopping cart. We scroll down a bit. Uh, we've got our categories, our products again. Uh, so it looks exactly the same as the store that we made as an admin. Uh, I'm just going to show you this one product right quick so you can see how the items with personalization uh, names and numbers are uh, processed. So let's click on this product and you can see right here we've got a preview of the front and a preview of the back of the shirt. So when a user is going to buy this they're going to select their size, they're going to select the number that's on the back and they're going to put in the name and the quantity. So let's say we just want one of these. Um, and then basically you can just build out however many items you need. You could build out a whole roster. You just choose your size, your number, your name, and the quantity and click add member. 
uh, and then from there you can process your order. So I would click on add to cart, but it's not going to let me add this to cart because if you remember on this store we created some order tags. So in this scenario right here are the order tags. You would have to make a selection from these options in order to proceed. So that is how an actual customer would make a store on your website. And remember, you can set your stores up to make it so that your customers can open them without your approval. Your customers can open them only with your approval. Or you can set it up so that you, as the admin, are the only one who's able to make stores. So you would make the stores on behalf of your customers. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.